I've been given this device to take a look at because it won't power up correctly anymore. So let's see if we can fix it. On this Silvercrest suit maker, three of the screws are just standard cross heads. This fourth one here is actually a triangular socket. Now I thought I had a, a bit that would go down in there, but even if I did, I wouldn't be able to get the drive in there because it's really quite narrow. I wouldn't be able to get the adapter in as well. So these ones I should just be able to take out if I can get the screwdriver in the appropriate place. Mm, that's a bit tight. I don't think it's that head. It must be a posi drive. Let's see if it's actually bigger than I think it is. Ooh. Yeah, that's working. Because of that triangular screw head down in there, I'm going to take this old screwdriver bit, which has probably been used as a punch by the look of it, and I'm going to fashion a triangular head on it, I hope. One of the issues with this screw being right down in here is I don't know how big to make this. So I had a thought about this. So I've got uh, some blue tack. And I'm rather hoping that if I poke it down in here, and just squish it in the end, you'll get an impression of what the triangle looks like. This hole actually tapers. So as you push it in, the blue tack gets tighter and tighter. Of course, the worry is, instead of being stuck to the screwdriver, it's going to be stuck to the hole at the bottom. Now I've got a piece of blue tack stuck down the hole. Now I may be fortunate because I've got this long pair of forceps. I gave up on that idea. I'm just going to have to guess. So, so here we are back at the base of the unit again. Well, I have fashioned a triangular bit. Um, would I suggest anyone else does it? We, we, yes, you could do. Although, <laughs> it was while I was doing it and regrinding it and regrinding it, uh, I did come to the conclusion it might actually be quicker to, to buy one and wait for it to come from China. But... Um, especially as it was getting shorter all the time. Um, of course, you're locating it blind as well. But I did get it in there. The first few times I ground it too small. Um, and uh, when it went in, it just took the corners off. And when I did this the first time, I did this very, very carefully, maintaining a lot of downward force and turning it very slowly. And given that you can't see the screw in there, um, it really is potluck as to whether you get the right shape. With this, this is turning. I'm, I'm pleased to say it, it is coming out. As I said, I, I was 
pushing down quite hard on the end uh, to keep it locked in there. But still, I got there in the end. So now I can actually start looking at what may be the problem. Ooh. Ah. Time to do a bit of reverse engineering, I suppose, and try to work out what goes where and how this actually functions. I'll put some diagrams at the end. It does look as though it's actually been wet inside or damp during construction. There's, uh, there's rust down here on some screws and here there's something on there, possibly mulligatawny. Uh, rust on these screws, or well, the washers actually, the screws just look discoloured. Okay, well I'm going to have a play then and see what I can find out. Well I've lifted the board out and just in here you can see something really rather unpleasant. I don't know what it is. It it does look as though it's rusty, and uh, that's a possibility. Uh, there's there's nothing that seems to have affected the back of the PCB. At first, I thought well, it could just be flux, maybe, but mm, I don't know the. The leg of this transistor here does appear to be corroded as well, uh, but I, I need to get a closer look at it and see what I think. It might just be water damage, um, whether it's blown any of the components, whether I'll be able to prove it or not, I don't know. During my investigations to find out what else might be wrong, I had a look at this panel normally sits down here on top of there four screws take it out interesting to note actually that uh, although the pan this itself has um, has got like a film across on the other side it's actually just a plate and there's no seal around this this inside edge so if you get this excessively wet in on the other side, it will just come through. And I suspect that's why we had uh, some rusty resistors on here and here. They hadn't gone right through the lead, so they're fine. They weren't shorting out to anything else, but uh, nonetheless, they were rusty. And the other thing I found, which is, would have been a source of a problem, was that despite these ones, so if I can hold this without blocking your view. Oops, missed. So, what I found was one, two, three, four of these buttons worked. This one was a little bit dodgy. These three up here. Um, they were no good and they didn't um, they didn't short out when you press the button now they do now because I've stuck some service all switch cleaner in they they're quite a loose fit around here and so I just squirted some of each one and and worked the button and uh, I've, I've cleared that problem and I suspect again it was water damage so they're all okay now. Uh, the other problem was whilst I was faffing around trying to work out what the circuit diagram was I managed to break this wire off and so uh, I've prepared that prepared that I'm going to solder that back on. I had to 
move this plastic cover down a bit and try to pull something out a little bit uh, just to solder it on. And once I've stopped messing around, now that I've... I thought I was going to have to change these switches, you see, but having fixed them, I now know don't need to, so now I can solder this back on and uh, put this back together. So just put a bit of solder on there to tin that. Don't want to put strip too much off uh, when you expose the wire because when you apply a bit of heat it will shrink back anyway. And just put a bit of solder on here just to tin this. Incidentally I cleaned the rust off that transistor and a little bit of other rust that was on the board and I've replaced the board back on its carrier and put it into the base of the unit. There. Back on again. Just don't wiggle it around too much now. Because it's a very thin wire and uh, I will end up breaking it again if I'm not careful. Let's place this back down on here. I suppose if you wanted to you could put a Vaseline around that uh, where the plate was under here around the edge and might provide a waterproof seal for a while I suppose it depends how well it fits anyway anyway there's no rubber gasket or anything like that in there right so with that back together I need to think about putting the back on There are two ways to do it. I've managed to drop that in and upside down. Oh well. This of course is the security one. will require my special tool. Just started it enough with the screwdriver that um, got it to stand upright and then I was able to tighten it with that. pair of 81s on it. It doesn't have to be super tight, it just has to not fall out when it vibrates. There. Hurrah! Right, time to give it a test and a bit of a clean because it's got dirty fingerprints all over it now. Now something that uh, caught my attention was the fact that there had obviously been water getting inside the unit and whilst I had some water in here I found that it leaked out which I wasn't terribly happy with. Not very fast but what I have noticed is here, here and here there seems to be some slight cracks and that's where it's screwed in from underneath where the base the heating element is attached to the plastic jug and so I'm going to just take the base off 
and see if I can pop some super glue into these spots here. And whilst we've got it upside down, have a quick look at these connections. This one, which is a longer one, makes connection first. That's the earth. These two are for the heating element and these three are for the sensors which are in the handle. Because you've got two level sensors, so that's the minimum level, that's the maximum level, and you've also got some sort of reed switch, although I don't know that it is actually because it, it doesn't measure zero ohms when you put a magnet against it, but there is a magnet in the lid that ensures that you have this closed before you can switch it on, so that's what they're for. Fortunately, no security screws on this one, although it wouldn't be so much of a problem now because you can, you'd be able to get a bit in there. Alright, it's good. One thing I did note is there is a single screw here and you think, oh good, I'll take this screw out and that will release this cover so that I can have a look at whether there's any problems with uh, what's inside here. Well, it's actually easier, although I didn't find out until afterwards. Take this off and then you better take that off a lot easier. There's some clips here. Right, so I think what we're going to do is just pop a little bit of super glue in around this base of these where they they look as though they're broken. Because there is a bit of rust here and here as well. Right, I've super glued those tiny cracks, just run some in there in the hope that that will be sufficient. I think over tightening these screws doesn't help either. I suppose because the jug itself gets hot, um, it's probably not a good thing. Maybe even if it gets hot and then you pour a load of cold water in. This possibly stresses the plastic because the screws would be hot or possibly hot and they would, oops, would uh, cool down at a different rate. So maybe it does stress the plastic. As you may have gathered, the screwdriver is very close to this lens. over tighten them because I really think it would be a bad idea to over tighten them. <laughs> 